Yo, what's good? It's your boy, B-Dale. If you're new to this channel, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. But today I'm going to give an extensive demonstration on the sun cycle activation that amplifies the quintal central alchemical element, which is the primordial source of the universe that connects you to the ethereal plane through the grand unified theory. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of stuff we're going to cover tonight. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. There's a lot of psychological operations when you're talking about these movies and predictive programming that's acclimated to the solar cycle 25 and the pole shift in itself, right? We're going to get into it. So first we're going to start out with the fact that, see, the sun is actually a celestial uh, structure that produces an amalgamation of coronal mass ejections, which are X-class solar flares that activates the X gene, which turns you into an x man. We're going to get into that because it's all acclimated to the spirit of Melchizedek because it's basically the personification of the etheric force within you that connects you to the space-time continuum as the planet is going through a metamorphic change due to the sun cycle, which is propagated by solar cycle 25. So you read this publication by the Science Alert. It says a gaping hole in the sun bigger than 60 Earth just blasts a solar wind right at us. So when you're looking at the central system of the sunspot that's basically on the celestial body of the sun, it is basically a direct emulation, right, of the Hebrew... A numerical component of the letter six, right? So when you look at the central system of six in ancient Hebrew, it's a direct emulation of the sunspot that is being projected down to the planet to basically project and amplify a magnetic pole shift, right? And the reason that's connected to it is because it's connected to the central system of the spirit of the moon. The spirit of the moon is the six ether energy. So when you're looking at these coronal mass ejections, this is actually reversing the polarity of the six ether energy that kept us stuck in the Piscean age under the dark frequency of the lunar cycle, which is the sleep spell of King Gu. So these coronal mass ejections that's hitting the planet is basically reversing the polarity of patriarchy to restore the matriarchy. You, Because when you understand a sun cycle, a sun cycle is activated by nature and nature is personification of a matriarch. That's when you have the dualistic forces of the divine feminine and the divine masculine working in symbiotic connection to reverse the polarity of this demonic energy that's on the planet. When you're talking about the cursed seed and the black nobility and these archons that control everything in the higher dimensions, when you're talking about the demiurge, right? So it's basically a direct emulation of the spirit of the moon sigil system, and it's a direct emulation of the sigil system of the letter six in ancient Hebrew, right? So it's basically going against the celestial body of the monolithic uh, megastructure, which is a satellite for the energy extraction matrix. We're talking about the moon here. So the sun, these coronal mass ejections that you're looking at, this sun spy activity has the ability to reverse the polarity that's connected to uh, the metatronic overlay. So this was where you're talking about the propagation of religion, the propagation of technological devices, the propagation of a crypto control system, the uh, propagation of everything that's connected to the material world. So this sigil system that you see right here on the sun is a representation 
of the dematerialization of the six ether energy that was controlled by the Canaanite who was doing the bidding of these archonic forces, who is also known as your black nobility, right? Says a giant hole in the atmosphere of the sun more than five times larger than the diameter of Jupiter is unleashing a powerful solar wind that's blasting through the solar system, right? So with that being said, that energy is going to reverse the polarity of patriarchy in the lunar cycle because we're in the Aquarian age. The Aquarian age is the golden age. And the golden age is only going to be galvanized by those who are connected to uh, nature and carbon and things of that nature. So when you get into uh, scientific, uh, quantitative, analytical data, the sun uh, in itself has the ability to uh, alter things all throughout human history, right? So when the sun was at solar maximum in solar cycle 24, right? You had all these things that happened all throughout ancient history. You had the American Revolution. You had the French Revolution. You had the, the predecessor of uh, Emperor Napoleon. Then you had the Vienna Congress. You had the July Revolution. You had the Union of Italy. You had a war of succession. Then you had the French and uh, Prussian War in the Paris Commune. And then you had the uh, revolution of in Russia from 1905 to 1907. Then you had the great October Revolution. So the sun in itself, when you're talking about sunspot activity, it is basically the foundation to respark uh, a restoration process. It has the ability to reverse the polarity of everything that was subjugating the planet in a form of revolution. That's why you see many different forms of revolution taking place when you're looking at the sun's influence on historical history. American Revolution, the Great French Revolution, July Revolution. So when the sun is at solar maximum during the time in between 2024 and 2025, when the sun reaches uh, solar maximum, that is basically the personification of the seventh seal being open. Because when you understand the metaphysical codex of solar cycle 25, two plus five equals what? Seven, because that energy of the sun is going to break open the seventh seal, the seventh seal that connects uh, by turning everything into a new heaven and a new earth when you go to Revelation chapter 21, 21 verse 1, right? So with that being said, you had the Cuban Revolution, you had a revolution of 1905 in Russia. All these revolutions is basically ending the concept of a corporation because 2023 was actually the inception point of the seven-year tribulation period, right? We're going right, our way back to seven because seven, when you understand the numerical components of it, seven is also... Uh, is a representation of God when you understand Hinduism of Krishna. Krishna comes from the word Christ and Christos, which is a Christ consciousness. And Krishna is the outer manifestation of Shiva, which equates to seven, right? So that God frequency is hitting the planet is bringing a revolutionary progress to, re to restore the matriarch back on the planet in a form of nature and nature is connected to the sun, right? So all this works in symbiotic connection. In order to understand everything intuitively, you have to understand that, you know, politics, uh, quantum physics, metaphysics, mind science technology, uh, uh, spirituality in itself, uh, religion, uh, politics, all this stuff works in symbiotic connection. If you don't know one, you don't know the other. So that's why all this stuff ties into uh, historical context, right? So when you're looking at, I don't know why I keep doing that. So when you like when you're looking at these coronal mass ejections, it is producing an amalgamation of galactic cosmic rays, right? That has a tetrahedron energy. And the tetrahedron energy is basically the foundation of the God frequency, right? That God frequency in itself is the etheric frequency that connects your etheric core to the planet, right? Which gives you sovereignty on a spiritual level, right? which gives you a nationality. Nationality comes from the word nativity. Nativity comes from the word birthright. Your birthright is basically your etheric core to the planet in the form of ether that is being projected by the sun because the inception of all ancient civilization started with a what? A sun cycle under a matriarch, under a republic, right? So when the sun reaches solar maximum, right? It has the ability to produce the golden age, right? So look, when you're looking at this data chart, it's telling you that we just got out of uh, we just got out of solar cycle 24. Now we're basically in the middle going into 2025, uh, I mean 2024.
which is basically the personification of the eight year, when you understand the numerical supreme mathematics of the 5% nation, the eight of 2024, two plus two plus four equals eight. And eight is the symbology to reverse the polarity of building and destroying. So the eight year is basically the segue to the year 2025, where you're going to have solar cycle 25, because 2025 is two plus two plus five equals nine and a nine ether energy that's coming down to the planet to create a magnetic pole shift. So the seven seal, so that's when you're talking about seven mind, God mind, nine ether energy, nine knowledge, which is right knowledge. So you got to be operating from the place of the uh, activating the spirit of Melchizedek, right? That spirit of Melchizedek is being activated by the sun, the energy of the sun, which, which operates on fractions of light or angles of light. Because you got magnetites and the dendrites in the brain, which produces more neurons. And those neurons activates the neurotransmitters through the neuroendocrine transducer to where you receive these energies to where you activate the Christ consciousness. So you cannot activate the Christ consciousness if you're still connected to the Metatronic overlay. If you're connected to the Metatronic overlay, when the sun has the ability to reverse a polarity in the name of a cyber attack or a coronal mass ejection or EMP, you're going to fall when the system falls, right? Because this system is based on a technological system, right? Because the third eye for the beast is technology. So you're still going to be connected to the lunar energy in the midst of a sun cycle, right? Which means that you're going to fall when patriarchy falls, right? So right here, you're looking at solar cycle 25 predicted. It says right here, and uh, the sun is going to reach solar maximum in between the year of 2024 and 2025, right? But then also, when you got to understand the supreme mathematic sequence of the 5% nation, nine is the symbology to be reborn. You're going to be reborn from these, so, uh, from these solar frequencies that's hitting the planet, which produce nitroids that sparks the soul of man, Solomon's temple, right? And it tells you right here, Solar maximum is expected in July 2025 with a peak of 115 sunspots. The sunspots that we just had, you know, that uh, it basically produced 60 that was the size of 60 Earths, right? It's the size of 60 Earths. And then when you look, it says right here, solar maximum expected in 2025 of July with a peak of 115 sunspots, right? So that's why I told people, I don't know which video it was. Um, it's going to be a time in 2025 that is going to be intrinsic sunlight for three days straight. It's going to be sunlight for three days straight. No moon, no nothing. It's going to be sunlight for three days straight. So that's why it's imperative to get your lymphatic system and your endocrine system in, in alignment. You got to activate those seven energy cortexes, the chakra system. You got to activate and unlock so you can receive this transmission to unlock the junk DNA. Right. To activate that X gene within you to where you become an X man. Right. Because the planet is in a state of judgment. So there's a diametrical difference. You got two different timelines that's going on. You got a timeline to where the chosen one chosen ones is going to be activated when you're talking about the 144,000. When you take the one plus four plus four equals nine, then you get the nine ether energy that activates the 144,000 and the sun cycle of 2025, which is two plus two plus five equals nine. So that nine ether energy, when a sun is at solar maximum in solar cycle 25, which is the symbology of seven, which is the God frequency, you're going to receive that energy, the spirit of Melchizedek during this time period to where you activate your higher capabilities. Because I told you that ethereal energy in the last video that is coming from the magnetosphere, which is basically the abode of the most high, which is the personification of the fifth dimension. So this is where you get your uh, biblical context of a new heaven and a new earth, right? So with that being said, this sunspot activity has the ability to create radio blackouts, geomagnetic uh, storms, solar radiation storms. Uh, it has the ability to create many different implications for the energy extraction matrix, many different afflictions, right? So it says right here, the solar cycle prediction panel forecasts the number of sunspots expected for solar maximum along with timing peak of minimum of solar activity levels for the cycle. Right. And this is all being facilitated by the International Space Environment Services. Right. So this is a good time to be alive. You're going to have those who are connected to the Metatronic, Metatronic overlay, which is the material in the physical plane. Those who are stuck in third density, you're going to fall when patriarchy falls. 
the chosen ones, you're going to activate with the planet in the form of nature and matriarchy. You're going to rise up. There are 144,000 is going to rise up. You're going to start seeing a lot of people like me, the young elder, phase one, uh, Dr. Phil Valentine, Rod Hayes. You got, you know, all these people bringing the truth to these platforms. You know, Yaki Awaken, uh, Bro Yosef. There's going to come a time where everybody's going to come you know, and work in symbiotic connection to reverse the polarity of everything that's being propagated on the planet, right? And that energy in itself is going to basically destroy the interstellar projection grid system that's connected to the fermented dome. You got to watch that uh, firmament and the archons uh, video that I put out maybe like a week and a half ago. So now when you're looking at the life cycle of a sun, right? When you're talking about sunspot activity and things of that nature, so when you're looking at an orange or a yellow sun, that is basically a personification of an old star. And when the sun turns red, it's basically about to die. And then it's transmuted into a form of a planetary nebula, which loses its magnetic field and the frequency of the red sun. And it's transmuted into a, a white dwarf star that is also transmuted into a black hole. And the black hole has the ability to take you, taking you into a different space and time. That is your personification of a new heaven and a new earth right so that's this is basically the cycles of everything that's going to be happening when you're talking about solar cycle 25 right matter of fact there is a planetary nebula the magnetic field of it i have a video of a person uh experiencing that right i'm gonna show the video here right now i hope y'all taking some notes man because the intensity of everything on this planet is, is starting to, you know, is starting to wake up. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is the seven year tribulation period. 2023 was basically the segue because the reason I said it was the segue of everything, because they had to dismantle all the corporations. We, we're going to get into it. I'm going to play this video. So with this video you're looking at, this is basically a magnetic field energy of a planetary nebula that's uh, basically in our solar system. Hey, that's good, now wait for it. Wait for it. Can y'all see, see that? that? What the hell going on here, America? Now that look crazy, baby. That looked like a whole planet entering into our solar system. It looked like a fireball and fell through. Look at that. Right it looked like a fireball went through the firmament, or do it? What would it look like? Do this look like the firmament? See, I got the little. Did something hit the firmament? You know what I mean? I don't know. I can't call this one. All I know is it looks real creepy. Look at this here. Well, I can't make this up. And I wonder why they ain't showing this on. On the, on the regular news and everything, but they trying to cuss everything see, up, huh? See that? But if you know, see, you know, you see the map. You see what, what it has a color spectrum on it. You know what I'm saying? It has its own frequency bandwidth. So when you see something that has its own frequency bandwidth, it means that it basically has its own magnetic field. Excuse me. Yes, so, like I said, this is a good time to be alive. A lot of stuff is starting to happen in our solar system. Right? A lot of stuff. So, uh, there's another thing I wanted to show you. Where is it at? Yes. As I was telling you earlier, there's going to be a time period on this planet where the sun is going to be, is going to be in transit solar radiation on this planet for at least three days, right? And during that time period, when the sun is at solar maximum, that could be the time period when these blackouts happen. So that's, so one thing you got to understand about the elites and the blastocracy, uh, the black nobility, the Illuminati, or whatever you want to call them, what happens is sometimes what they do is they create psychological operations around celestial events, right? To hide the fact that the planet is going through a metamorphic shift in a, uh, a great awakening period, right? which is the desolation of abomination, right? So one thing you got to understand is, is that they always create, you know, uh, psychological operations. They create false flags during a time period when you have certain planetary alignments, right? So it's going to be one of those things where you got you have to decipher if it's going to be an EMP that's going to be projected by Iran and China 
in all these uh in the, all these other countries, or is it going to be projected by nature? Is it going to be a CME, which is a coronal mass ejection? Now, the diametrical difference in between the two, now the energy of the sun has the ability to produce coronal mass ejections that can knock out the power grid all throughout the planet. Now, a EMP has the ability to knock out the power grid in a certain geographical landmass. So that's the difference. So if it's just happening in one landmass, that happened by... Uh, the plastocracy, the government, the government facilitated that uh, that energy in order to create a Hengelian dialectic principle, problem, reaction, solution, and the solution is a false solution of the propagation of the New World Order system. So when you're looking at this is already starting to go on right now. You had two suns in Antarctica for 24 hours without setting. This is a video right here. Right. I hope y'all need to get ready, man, because there's a lot of stuff that's going to be taking place. You know, they time is up and it's the end of the corporation. I did. I put out a video talking about the end of the corporation. So what you're looking at right here, you got two celestial bodies, two suns in the solar system. Without setting for two for 24 hours. We in that time period. Right. In Antarctica it's going to because we all know. The inception of the planet, when you're talking about the 24,000 year verification period, the first 6,000 years on this planet, it was a sun cycle. So that means that Antarctica was a tropical civilization. So since it was a tropical civilization, that means that it was a matriarchal civilization during that time period. Right. And that goes into the hollow earth theory and things of that nature, because when you go into the caverns of these ice cycles and beyond uh, beyond the uh, ice walls or whatever, there's uh, tropical civilizations beyond the ice wall and inside the planet when you're talking about those ice caverns. But that's a whole nother uh, lecture that I'm going to uh, give a definitive broadcast on, right? So now back to what I was saying. Like I said, this is basically a transmutation process of the life cycle of the sun, right? Which is equated to billions of years. So what you see it could have been another sun and it's the magnetic field of this uh, planetary nebula was in our solar system, right? To activate the pole shift. So there's many different things that's going on. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff that's going on in our, uh, in our atmosphere at the time period. So now, now I'm going to show this video because all this stuff works in conjunction. Lines, a massive hole has opened on the sun this weekend. Two significant solar eruptions are heading our way. The solar maximum is likely to hit in January. Why is it so important? Now, consider the uniplanetary evolution theory. It suggests all our planets are Earth in different stages of its evolution, visible all at once. Mars is Earth destroyed in the future. Venus, Earth in the past. Every billion years, our sun ejects a huge clump of iron rich plasma on its surface. That plasma becomes the iron core that breathes life into our Earth. NASA recorded a massive piece of the sun's plasma breaking off the surface, now swirling around its pole. And here's the kicker. The sun is about to flip its pole's magnetic field as early as next month. So like I said, when the sun has the ability to reverse the frequency of the pole shift, now we're going to get back to this video. Now, this is important. This is very important. You got to understand uh, biochemical castration, nanotechnology, right? So now this is where we get into uh, the genetical uh, stable, which is basically a form of a kill switch that's engineered by microbes, right? So those microbes are basically nanoparticles within the food that we eat, these nanotechnologies, right? So these nanotechnologies... Is all throughout our molecular structure and it's all throughout all these technological devices. So it says the probiotic microbes have become the effectiveness chases and the engineering, diagnostic, therapeutic technologies. Now, what I'm saying is it has when you have these coronal mass ejections coming to the planet and you got this technology in you from the food, from the things that you're around, when you're connected to these devices and things of that nature, when you're connected to everything that's artificial. What happens is it has the ability to create a form of a, one, a P136 deletion syndrome, 
which basically dematerializes the two frontal lobes of the brain. So that's why they said during this time period, when you have uh, the sun at solar maximum, that's where it sparks uh, many different illnesses on the planet, right? That's important to know. So that's why when you go, we're going to get into the movie thing uh, later, but that's why it's imperative to understand, like, you got to practice, um, you know, fasting and things of that nature. You got to be able to have the mental fortitude and the discipline to fast and go without food, right? Because like I said, this food is going to destroy us as we're going through the post shit. And you got to uh, create your anatomy around the fact that uh, when the post shift happens, it can create a massive depopulation by 2025, right? Because I told you the 2025, the numerical spectrum of it is a personification of the nine year. The nine year is the nine ether that's coming from the sun and solar cycle 25, two plus five equals seven. That's the guy energy, right? The seventh seal has been open, right? That seventh seal, that's when it comes out about the Deco publication, when they was talking about how uh, the great majority of all the population is going to be uh, in a form of depopulation. So that's why you got to get this book right here called White House Years, right? White House Years, uh, Henry Kissinger, he just died at 100 years old, right? He was a eugenicist, right? When you understand anything about eugenics, everything is based on uh, the personification of uh, global depopulation. So global depopulation is a form of uh, basically germinating our bodies with many different forms of nanotechnology when you have these energies hitting the sun. So that's why I say you're going to see a lot more people dropping, uh, you know, collapsing and, and dying and things of that nature because of these energies from the sun, right? That's imperative. That's, you know, that's, that's why you got to understand that. So you got to read this book, right? You see how thick it is, right? White House years is basically telling you about many different afflictions about eugenics, why they created eugenics. You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand their language. That's the thing, though. They're not going to say everything verbatim, but, you know, you got to understand the language and understand the symbology of certain words. You got to read between the lines. Right. Because they like to dress everything up that, because the what the elites like to do, they like to play semantics with wordage. Right. Because they know the great majority of people on the planet don't, are not going to understand what they're talking about. Right? So now, we're going to go back to this video. Would that trigger the release of the plasma? So, it says... Around its pole. And here's the kicker. The sun is about to flip its pole magnetic field as early as next month. Would that trigger the release of the plasma? The creation of a... of a new planet, planet right before our eyes. Repeat your eyes to the sky, please. We're about to witness something that will change our perspective on where we came from. So he said a new planet. What he's basically saying is a new heaven and a new earth. That's what he's basically saying, right? You got to understand, you got to know how to read their language, right? There is a video that I've been watching. I don't think I there's another video that I need to I need to get I need to send it on here because it's important. So bear with me here. I'm about to send it to myself here. No, that was a video, sorry. <laughs> but anyhow, so like I said, now we're gonna get into um another video right here because like i said you know these solar energies have the ability to uh reverse a pole shift and a pole, pole shift reversal in itself if you're still connected to the six ether energy you're going to fall when the system falls that's why i was telling you the six ether is patriarchy that dissipates into nothingness there's no sustainability around six ether so i said you know the deagle publication right when you have the sun at solar maximum, it has the ability to kill off a lot of people, those who are following the principles of the six ether energy, which is basically the silver key. And the silver key is the lunar light like energy under the spirit of the moon. Because when you look at this right here, this is the sigil of the spirit of the moon. 
which is basically a direct emulation of the sigilism that's on the celestial body of the sun, which is basically the personification of a solar wind. And those solar winds is the size of 60 Earth, sir, Earths. So then you also have, uh, it's basically a direct emulation of the sigilism of the let, number six in ancient Hebrew. So like I said, the sunspot activity is basically dematerializes everything in the material plane. Right. And it's going to activate the six of six electrons, six protons, six neutrons, the God body, the God frequency. Right. So. With that being said, when you're not operating from a God frequency, you're going to have many different people falling, you know, collapsing. So this is why this video I got to show you. They are shipping out. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of body bags all over the country. This is proof that something big is about to happen. Why else would they be preparing millions of body bags, sending them out all over the country in unmarked vehicles, in FedEx vehicles? Why would they be doing this? Something big is about to happen. Are you prepared for what's coming? Have you stocked up on food? Have you stocked up on water? If you haven't, Woken up yet, you are running out of time because whatever's coming is right around the corner. They are censoring me. I need you to like the video for the algorithm. So like I said, they shipping out body bags, just like that time period, I think was in the, uh, in the early, uh, like 2010, 2012 or something. Remember they had those plastic uh, coffins by those train, uh, by those tr uh, them train tracks all around the planet. So, with that being said, now, this is where we get into the fact that, like I said, it can be one of those things where you got to understand the anatomy structure, right? You got to understand what non-ether is, right? Non-ether is basically, you know, when you're talking about these chronal mass ejections that's in the planet, you know, these X-class solar flares that activates the X gene, right? So non-ether is basically the personification of antimatter. It's basically personification of electricity, thermodynamics, hydrodynamics, electromagnetic radiation, and resonant energy. So when you understand the principles of the non-ether energy, you will be able to tap into your power, right? You'll be able to tap into your power. So that's why you got to get this publication by Dr. York. It's talking about the re-engineering of the non-ether. The re-engineering the re-engineering of the non-ether, which is acclimated to the nine attributes of the ether in the ancient science. Ether permeates of all nature. Because uh, one thing about ether is basically uh the fifth element. It's the quintessential element that sparks creation because it's connected to the four basic elements of earth, wind, water, fire. Right. So that sparks creation in itself when it's conjoined with ether, which is a dark energy. And that dark energy is the foundation of the grand unified theory of everything on the planet through ionization and plasma and uh, electromagnetic radiation that causes neutrinos. And those neutrinos sparks everything on the planet in the form of carbon, because carbon is the building block of all civilization. So this is where the planet and your, bio your biological system is able to receive and transmit information. Right through the neuroendocrine transducer to where it transmutes the carbon body into a crystalline state. So, like I said, you got to be metamorphosizing with the planet because when that ether that's coming in, ether ain't nothing. When you're talking about the aurora borealis, when they, you see that green energy that's hitting the planet, hitting our atmosphere, that ain't nothing but electromagnetic radiation and ionization basically happening at the same time. That's ether that's coming in, right? That's the basically the aura of the planet. And when you operate from the God frequency, that is your aura. And that aura in itself is what connects you to the sun when the sun is at solar maximum. So this is where you're talking about the pole shift activation. Pole shift activation, the, the planet is activating. You're supposed to be activating with the planet. You're supposed to be activating with the planet under the sun cycle. For those who are stuck in the sun uh, lunar cycle with patriarchy, you want to get artificial intelligence. You want to eat all the genetically modified foods that have these nanobots and stuff in there, whatever. You're going to fall when the system falls because one thing about coronal mass ejections and X-class solar flares, 
they don't it, it basically dematerializes everything from a form of technological devices so when you have these devices in your uh anatomy you're going to fall when all the grid system basically falls right you're going to fall when a metatronic overlay so ether is basically the electromagnetic radiation that permeates outer space is a fundamental uh, force of nature that motivates movement of matter matter is dark uh, dark matter energy right ether so that's why it's imperative to understand like i said the neutrinos sparks the soul of man solomon's temple matter of fact Like I said, ether is basically the fifth element. It's the quintessential element that's connected to the four basic elements, fire, air, water, earth, and conjoined. That's when you get the star Polaris or the tetrahedron energy of the tetrahedral angel radiation that's coming from the sun, right? So this is where you get into Tahuti, who is Thoth, as above, so below, as within, so without. So that dark matter energy, like I said, those neutrinos sparks the soul of man, Solomon's temple. When you're looking at this star, Solomon's temple is basically the soul of man or the activate the son of man and the son of man connected to the sun from that radiation. So that's how you activate that energy. Right. So that's why how you uh, activate the Merkaba light ship It's the centripetal in a set in the centripetal and a centrifugal forces conjoining together. Right which is uh, to where it combats the dualistic paradox of the energy extraction matrix. So you activate your Merkaba light ship. The Ka is the spirit and the Ba is the body. You activate your light ship by working in connection with the solar cycle, right? So the combine the uh, combines of uh, opposing energies in perfect balance, masculine and feminine, earth and the cosmos, this union results in activation of light and protection around your body that can transport your consciousness to higher dimensions, connect you to the space tower continuum where you activate your Akashic records through the epigenetic body, which is connected to the oversoul and your oversoul is your Zohar body, your higher self, which reminds us of the potential power we yield when we find balance and raise our vibration, right? So that's why you see Thoth with the Emerald Tablets, the Atlantean priest guy, he is holding what, right? He is holding that sigil, right? The conjoining forces of the Merkaba light ship. I told you, you connect all the four basic elements amalgamated with ether, right? That's how you activate. So all these four basic elements is basically connected to the planet, planet Earth, which is a form of uh, carbon. So when you have carbon amalgamating with ether, that sparks the soul of man, right? Solomon's temple. That green Ethereum energy. So shout out to Young Gelder and Phase One for the green uh, light movement, right? So that's why it's imperative to understand the electromagnetic spectrum of the frequency bandwidth. Because that frequency bandwidth, that radiation, that cosmic radiation that's hitting the planet, that is the God frequency. That's ether that's hitting the planet. So ether, what it does is when it's uh, collaborating with the carbon body, it doesn't matter what type of radiation that's coming to the planet. It can be... Uh, uh, military modification weapon that's being uh, facilitated by the government. It doesn't matter. All these energy, 5G frequencies, you know, all these uh, ultraviolet frequencies, radio frequencies, microwave frequencies, FM radio frequencies, it don't matter what frequency. Ether and carbon has the ability to absorb it all because it's because when ether and carbon collaborate together, that creates gamma radiation, Right? That creates gamma radiation when you're looking at this right here, which is also the symbology of the color green. What is green? The green is basically the personification of the green Ethereum energy. When you're talking about the Sufi order of the suns of green light, right? Because now that's when you get into the Hulk, right? Hulk. He was operating from a place of gamma radiation. It tells you right here. It says gamma radiation normally destroys human tissue. So when Adamus took on the power of Hulk, he used Samuel Stern's nanobots to alter his cells. When you when you alter the cells of ether, collaborated with carbon, it creates immortalized cell lines to where the cells have the ability to replicate itself and to have a form of restoration and in a revitalization process. 
right? That activates, you know, the God body. So this is where you allow them to contain and use the hoax gamma energy. Gamma is the same color as the heart chakra, right? That green ethereal energy. So that radiation is a unique thing in the visible eye. So one thing, when you activate that God frequency, when you activate that gamma radiation, right? What happens is you're able to see in certain visible light spectrums. So this is where when you activate the God frequency, you're able to tap into where you can see uh, beyond the electromagnetic spectrum, just like uh, Dicenian glass has the ability to. Because when you activate that that uh, that heart chakra, one thing you got to understand about the heart chakra, the frequency band of your of your chakra system, right? It, you have to have your endocrine system in alignment. Your endocrine system is basically comprised of three things, which is the thymus gland, the hypothalamus gland, and the thyroid gland. Your thymus gland, which is connected to the heart chakra, that connects the frequency of the soul and the mind together to where you become a whole brain thinker. When you become a whole brain thinker, right, that's when you activate the magnetites and the dendrites to where you activate the same capabilities as a Dicenian glass, Dicenian glass is where you can activate the two physical eyes merged in with the spiritual eye to where you can see frequency, where you can see entities, where you can see uh, draconians, UFOs, or whatever, right? That's where your personification of the veil being uplifted within you, not just when a dome cracks open, right? So when you what you look at, there's a reason why it costs, you know, almost $9,000, right? It's kind of like the same thing, like when you activate the God within you, when you activate your higher abilities, what happens is, you ever seen the movie They Live? When he put on those glasses, he was able to see the world for what it truly was through the two physical eyes. Because the two physical eyes are basically uh, the personifications of the false light when you're trapped inside of a dome. The sun and the moon and the third eye is the personification of the true light, which is the spiritual sun of the star Polaris outside of the dome in the fifth dimension, which is the magnetosphere, right? So, like I said, when you activate these higher abilities, that's when you be able to see things for what it is. So that's like I said, during this time period, you're going to see a lot of more things that's going to get exposed as we're in solar cycle 25. You're going to have a lot more people waking up to see beyond, you know, the illusion, see beyond the metatronic overlay, to see beyond the Piscean dark energy that was propagated by the deep state shadow government, the cabal. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you this video. Woo. So, you know, just to simplify things, when you talk, I just wanna show people for, um, you know, through scholarship and through, um, you know, just to show people, you got to show people through the arts that all this stuff is taking place because I'm not one of those people where I, my word ain't, I don't want my word. I can just get on here and talk all day, but I got to show my receipts to show you what time we really living in. So this is what westernized, you know, news is saying about these uh, sun activations on the planet, because I got to show you this in real time to let you know that we in this, you know, we in this shit for real. I got to show you this stuff. There's a lot of action happening right now on the sun, just like climate patterns on Earth. The sun goes through a cycle of activity and it is ramping up right now, resulting in some pretty spectacular eruptions or solar flares. But as Brian Hackney explains, that could cause serious disruptions here on Earth. Getting pointed right at the sun with a little bit of focusing. Voila. That's Professor Jeff Matthews. Close one eye, keep the other eye open, and take a look down. <laughs> what do you think? I think it be, it's not the sun, is it? It, it is the sun, it right? Is? That, that, it is? That's the, <laughs> that is the only thing bright enough to get through this filter, is the sun itself. And Andrea Zabala isn't the only one excited about what's happening on the sun lately. Wow. <laughs> Late in November, what's called an archipelago of sunspots rotated into view around the sun's northeastern limb 
And under the watchful eye of Stanford student Ethan Lopes. On the sun right now, we get to see these fairly dark spots, and which are very large in magnitude, which means that they're like several Earths large for each little dot that we see. As the sun rotates, it's bringing these things to bear on us. And then we hold our breath. As the 11 year cycle of solar activity approaches its peak, the number of sunspots is increasing, so... As more activity is ramping up, we're seeing more of those solar flares and coronal mass ejections, but basically just big eruptions on the sun. That part isn't unusual. But this is one of the first times that we get to see so many dark spots that are close to each other and so large. In fact, just hours ago, massive prominences leapt from the sun carrying billions of tons of solar plasma. Last week, the sun spat this coronal mass ejection from its surface. When it hit Earth, it just produced amazing displays of northern lights. But if they're big enough, they can reach so like I said, look, this morning. See, that's what Western our scientists say. You know what I'm saying? This is why you should not listen to, you know, Eurocentric information. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to tell you things that's actually not, you know, the truth or whatever. Because what they do is... You know, when you live in a dualistic paradox, they mix truth with lies because somebody's lie could be the truth and somebody's lie, somebody's truth can be the lie. So that's why you got to operate from a state of reality because the reality is the aurora borealis, these aurora frequencies is actually ether that's coming to the planet from these coronal mass ejections. So like I said, it's the same color spectrum of the heart chakra. It's the same color spectrum when you're talking about Hulk. It's the same color spectrum of the spirit of Melchizedek when you're talking about the Sufi order of the sons of green light. It's the same color spectrum when you're talking about the Christ consciousness or Christos or Krishna. And Krishna is the outer manifestation of Shiva. And Shiva is equated to seven. And seven is, uh, in the alphabetical spectrum is the letter G. And G is the seventh letter. So that means it activates the God frequency, the Christ consciousness in you, right? So it's, when you're talking about a magnetic pole shift and new heaven and new, uh, new earth, when you go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, when you're talking about the return of God, I mean, the return of Jesus, there's no, it's not the return of Jesus. It's the return of the Christ. It's the return of the Christ consciousness that is activated by these green ethereal energies, right? That happens through ionization particles, right? Through fractions of light that's coming from the star Polaris outside of the dome. And the star Polaris is basically the personification of the activate the Merkaba light shit. But if they're big enough, they can reach the game, Early this morning, six million people across Quebec woke up to darkness and disbelief. They don't know, but they suspect it may have something to do with solar flare. Quebec and part of the Northeast United States had their power grids knocked offline. The last week, scientists recorded some of the luck. Like I said, now we're going to get into the, he says something about the power grid, right? Like I told you, anything that's connected to the Metatronic overlay <laughs> You're done. So this is why this just happened uh, yesterday. China's cyber army infiltrating uh, the United States. About 1 million people work in cybersecurity in the United States, but there are nearly 600 unfilled positions. So that's why I said when you understand the geo uh, geopolitical instability raises threat of catastrophic cyber attack in the next two years. So... That's when we get into Iran and China and all these other countries when you're talking about an EMP, an EMP when it knocks out the power grid. So it's inevitable that this event is going to take place. Like I said, you got to understand the diametrical difference between a CME or, or an EMP. Is it going to be happening from nature or is it going to be activated by the government? Now, that's the, you know, the main thing that's all speculation. We don't know which one's going to take place. But we all do know that nature must take back the planet. So it could be a coronal mass ejection that hits the planet and knocks out all the power grids in every country on the planet to bring about this new or uh, to basically dematerialize this new world order system. So. Like I said, they been said it's inevitable, inevitable that the power grid is going to get knocked out. They've been saying, it. you know, what I'm saying you know, the Obamas, they just put out a movie called Leave the World Behind. And I'm going to break uh, a piece of that movie down because it works in conjunction to the solar cycle 25 when you're talking about uh, the magnetic pole shift activation, right? Possible. 
Woke up to darkness and disbelief. They don't know, but they suspect it may have something to do with solar flares. Quebec and part of the northeast United States had their power grids knocked offline. The last week, scientists recorded some of the largest flares this century. This was bad enough, but the event that was the granddaddy of them all. The Carrington event. The Carrington event. The Carrington event. In 1859, this sunspot cluster fired a flare at Earth, literally burning up telegraph offices and pushing the northern lights down to South America. And that was 1859. That was 1859. Now we're much more dependent on a system of long wires, right? Our, our power grid, where we have these wires stretched across the land. I told you, technology is the third eye for the beast. Technology, when you're looking at these power lines, these grid systems, is connected to the interstellar projection grid system on the planet. That's what basically encases the dome structure. It's basically the glue between uh, the firmament and planet Earth. That's what this uh, this grid and these ley lines do, right? It keeps uh, connected to the metatronic overlay. It subjugates the body. It subjugates everything in nature because it puts the planet in a state of cryostasis. It locks down and puts an encryption on the planet. It locks down, puts an encryption on nature. It locks down and puts an encryption on the body. So these eth ethereal energies is basically breaking open the dome and in increments, right? To where you can get an influx of that energy that's coming to the planet. I'm going to play the video. Landscape. The disruption to long distance energy transmission uh, with the epic. Just sobering. How about let's go with sobering? <laughs> That'll be my choice here. In the meantime, put your eye right up there. We just can't say exactly what we'll see. I see like some black. I saw <laughs> a, a plane pass right in front of it. Oh my goodness, such perfect timing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Earth's atmosphere shields our bodies from the impacts of solar flares. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Now, notice she said the Earth's atmosphere. I need you to, t uh, just like in the um, the firmament in the archives video, our atmosphere is comprised of 78% nitrogen. That nitrogen has a hexahedron sigil system of the atomic structure of it. It's basically, basically uh, encapsulating the planet in the form of a dome structure, right? It basically puts an encryption over the planet to block out these energies. But like I said, nature is going to revert, reverse the polarity of the energy extraction matrix. Oh, I got hiccups like a mug. But we still going to get, we still going to put out the edification because we got to make it all make sense. Right? So this is why you're starting to see anomalies like this. Shout out to uh, Kala Amin Ra. This is a video that he's seen something in the sky, right? Saturday, December 9th, 2023, on his Gregorian calendar. This is not the moon. This is not the sun. Look at all the colors. This is not the moon in which we know it is. I just recorded a video the other day showing you the moon was rising right before the sun. It was the moon. I don't know if that was a star or planet, whichever it was, another celestial object. And then the sun was rising. This is not, and it wasn't even a full moon. This is not the moon. This is an object that is orbiting with the sun. I don't know what this is. I can't be, I'm not, I'm not here to claim to tell you what it is. I do not know. You can see the pulsating. My hand is not moving. That's that celestial object right there that is moving. My hand is not moving. I'm gonna move up a little bit now. Now my hand is moving. I am not moving. I am not moving. I am not moving, people. A little shake there, here and there, but that's not me. This celestial object, let me put it back in the center of my screen. Here you go again. I am not moving. I sit it in the center of my screen, people, and this is what's going on. I am not moving. And that is rotating counterclockwise. That object is rotating counterclockwise. And it has an energy field around it, like a black energy field. I am not moving, people. I am telling you, I am not moving. You can believe this if you, or you want to. That is truly up to you. I am, I am not deliberately turning my camera to the right, and that object is moving to the left.
I am not doing that. Woo, star family, years old. Like I said, man, we in that time. You better get right before it's too late. You better get right within yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, you know, working on yourself at all times. Because this is a real thing that's taking place. So like I said, you know, you got many different life cycles of the sun. You got the sun now. Like I said, an orange star is a sun that's about to die. So when it reaches solar maximum, that's where you get the red giant. And then the red giant is transmit, transmuted into a planetary nebula and then it's transmuted into a white star. And that white star is basically means that it lost the magnetic field frequency of the planetary nebula. Then it's transmuted into a black hole and the black hole takes you to a different space and time. New heaven, new earth, Revelation chapter 21, verse one, right? So that is your magnetic pole shift. That is basically the symbology connection of the pole shift activation when you're talking about the uh, eschatological uh, timeline, right? So like I said, the sun in itself has the ability to spark revolution. It can spark many different revolutions all throughout American history, French Revolution, July Revolution in France. That's what the sun energy does. When the sun is at solar maximum, it creates a revolution on the planet. And the revolution like I said, it won't be tele televised because that's when the grid system is going to be knocked out in solar cycle 25, right? So I'm going to play this video. It's opened up in the sun's surface and is spewing powerful streams of unusually fast radiation known as solar wind right at Earth. The size and orientation of this gap is wider than 60 Earths, which is unprecedented at this stage of the solar cycle. The giant dark patch on the sun, known as a coronal hole, took shape near the sun's equator on December 2nd and reached its maximum width of around 497,000 miles, 800,000 kilometers, within 24 hours. Since December 4th, the solar void has been pointing directly at Earth. Experts initially predicted this most recent hole could spark a geomagnetic storm, which could trigger radio blackouts and strong auroral displays for the next few days. However, this time, we were just lucky. The solar wind has been less intense than expected, so the result we get is that auroras are still possible at high latitudes, it is unclear how long the hole will remain in the sun, but previous coronal holes have lasted for more than a single solar rotation, 27 days, in the past. However, the hole will soon rotate away from so Earth. So like I said, that is a direct emulation of the sigil system of the spirit of the moon, which is the lunar light lock. They put an encryption on, on the planet, the sleep spell of King Gu, of the six ether energy, and then it's also an emulation of the number six in ancient Hebrew. So when you look at that, this is the number six in ancient Hebrew. Then when you look at the bottom right, the sigil of the spirit of the moon, same sigil, right? It's basically on, that's the uh, sunspot that's on the celestial body of the sun that's producing an amalgamation of sunspot activity. So that's exactly what you're looking at. So like I said, that is going to reverse the polarity of, you know, uh, that that subjugated the planet, that six ether energy that was controlled by uh, the Archons and the Canaanite. So this is why we're going to get into the Canaanite stuff later. Occur when the magnetic fields that hold the sun in place suddenly open up, causing the contents of the sun's upper surface to stream away in the form of solar wind according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as known as NOAA. Coronal holes appear as dark patches because they are cooler and less dense than the surrounding plasma. This is similar to why sunspots appear to be black. But unlike sunspots, coronal holes are not visible unless they are viewed in ultraviolet light. The radiation streams from coronal holes are much faster than normal solar wind, 
and often trigger disturbances in Earth's magnetic shield, known as geomagnetic storms. The last global hole to appear on the sun, which emerged in March, spat out the most powerful geo in the U.S., but it also forced spaceflight company Rocket Lab to delay a launch by 90 minutes. Strong geomagnetic storms can be troublesome for spaceflight, as they increase the density of gases in Earth's upper atmosphere, thereby increasing the drag on satellites and other spacecraft. In February 2022, SpaceX lost up to 40 brand new Starlink satellites when they failed to reach orbit after being launched into a minor geomagnetic storm. We can expect more extreme space weather events like this powerful geomagnetic storm as the sun builds towards a peak in its 11-year solar activity cycle. History has witnessed the destructive power of such events on at least two occasions in the past leaving us pondering the implications of the approaching peak of solar activity in 2025. Now, our sun is once again nearing its maximum activity, and the likelihood of another powerful blast of plasma is increasing. Back in history, on September 2nd, 1859, British astronomer Richard Carrington observed a giant solar flare. Just 18 hours later, our planet was struck by one of the most formidable geomagnetic storms ever recorded. Telegraphs across Europe and North America stopped working, and many telegraph poles caught fire. People could see the northern lights almost all over the planet. Although humanity recuperated relatively swiftly from this calamity, our civilization wasn't as dependent on electricity as it is now. The impact of another major solar storm in March 1989, though less potent, plunged the entire Canadian province of Quebec into darkness, leaving millions without electricity for a staggering 12 hours. Now, the prospect of a solar outburst of Carrington event magnitude looms ominously, heralding potential catastrophe. Historically, scientists believed such solar storms were rare, occurring once in a century. However, groundbreaking research by the University of Warwick and the British Antarctic Survey unveiled a startling revelation. Powerful magnetic storms are more frequent than previously thought. The sun's activity follows an approximately... Back to what I was saying, gamma radiation, look at that. Like I said, that green etherian energy, that sunspot activity is activating that green ether. Like I said, that's why everybody's propagating the green light movement. That is the Sufi order of the Su the Sufi order of the sons of green light, the spirit of Melchizedek. That's the God frequency. Approximately 11 year cycle, reaching a zenith of violent outbursts where charged particles relentlessly target our planet. Thorough analysis of Earth's magnetic field changes confirm that the most formidable burst of geomagnetic activity correspond to the sun's most potent explosions. During their investigation, the scientific team identified two types of dangerous events for Earth. First, there are strong magnetic superstorms, which happen about every three years. These storms can affect individuals sensitive to weather changes, but generally don't cause significant disruptions to technology. The second type is the rarest and most destructive, the mega-strong storms, which occur even less frequently. Throughout the span of over 150 years, only six such events have been recorded. This suggests that these tumultuous cosmic events occur approximately every 25 years, with no megastorms transpiring in the past two decades. However, scientists anticipate that the next colossal outburst is looming on the horizon. In 2012, a massive and potentially perilous solar eruption did occur, albeit with the solar wind veering in the opposite direction barely grazing our planet's surface. As we await the advent of the next monumental solar flare, our fortune may not hold as firmly. The exact consequences in such a scenario cannot yet be predicted. But one thing is certain. The skies will light up with stunning auroras around the world. There's also a possibility that among these auroras, a special kind called a strong thermal emission velocity enhancement or Steve may appear.
These enchanting auroras, glowing purple or white ribbons, were observed during the August 2022 geomagnetic storm, even as far south as Pennsylvania. Scientists still don't fully understand this optical phenomenon, but it frequently occurs during solar storms. However, Steve is not merely a celestial light show. Scientists have valid concerns that this radiant spectacle could be accompanied by a catastrophic megastorm, which could unleash havoc upon our technological infrastructure. Imagine electronic and aviation equipment faltering, communications breaking down, power grids in chaos. Like I said, like you said, power grids in chaos. Again, like I told you, stay off the airplanes. I'm telling you, you got to stay off those airplanes. Stay off. You know, anything as far as like, you know, ships and things of that nature. And I know they building up that uh, it's supposed to be coming out around uh, spring of this year. That new. Um, it's a ship that it's a big old carnival ship. And it's basically like when you go on a cruise with your family, but it's supposed to be the biggest one. It's even bigger than the Titanic and things of nature. It's the biggest ship ever created. And like I said, I think something's going to go down with that. You know what I'm saying? It's inevitable for certain things to happen. Because, like I said, they got to create this, you know, they, they got to put the truth in your face, basically. And satellites struggling to maintain their orbit. The destructive effects might even reach the depths of the ocean, endangering underwater communication cables and causing a prolonged internet blackout. The potential financial toll of such an event is staggering, with estimates reaching billions, if not trillions of dollars. If solar winds of this power hit our planet in 2012, some countries probably wouldn't have fully recovered up to this date. Still, the absence of technological amenities pales in comparison to the myriad of other catastrophic effects that solar storms can trigger, like droughts, floods, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Notably, periods of heightened and fluctuating solar activity correlate with a surge in the frequency of seismic activity. The devastating magnitude 9.1 earthquake that ravaged Indonesia in 2004, unleashing a massive tsunami and leaving a trail of destruction in its wake, serves as a haunting testament to the potential perils entwined with solar storms. The consequences were also felt by nations such as India, Thailand, Bangladesh, the Maldives Islands, Sri Lanka, and Somalia, resulting in a tragic loss of over 283,000 lives with thousands missing and over a million rendered homeless. Now, as the sun approaches its peak activity in the 11-year cycle, our vigilance becomes even more crucial. Yet, even after stormy activity subsides in 2025, can we truly heave a sigh of relief? Solar cycle 25, ladies and gentlemen. We're at the brink of the planet being at solar maximum. So this is now, this is where this this movie basically works in conjunction to everything. When you're talking about Solar Cycle 25, the sun being at solar maximum and things of that nature. So this movie was basically produced by the Obamas. The, the movie is called Leave the World Behind. It's on Netflix. So one thing you got to understand about the movie, the movie came out uh, in theaters on 11-22, right? November uh, 22nd. So when you add up all the numbers together, right? You get 33. And then when you understand the symbology of 33, that is a Freemasonic number. And then a movie also came out on Netflix on December 12th, right? You take 12 plus 8 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3, you get 27. 27, 2 plus 7 equals 9. So that 9 ether energy, they know is going to knock out the power grid because this movie is based on a cyber attack when you're talking about the power grid being shut down. In the movie, it shows you that, you know, uh, the economic system basically faulted out. Uh, the uh, the energy extraction matrix grid system faulted out, had all these uh, planes and helicopters and everything falling out of the sky. You had, you know, uh, you had many different forms of desolation happening during this time period. Right. That's why you got to watch this movie, because it's telling you this movie wasn't actually a movie. This was the last warning. So that's why at the end of the movie. It said the last one, but the last one, it was according to a little girl. She wanted to see the last episode, but it was a metaphysical codex talking about the last warning. 
So this movie is actually a last warning telling you to get your shit together, basically, because there's a lot of stuff that's going to be taking place. But within the movie, right? There's a uh, in the beginning of the movie, it shows you about the white lion. The white lion is equated to when the Dutch and the British came over here on the white lion in 1619, right? So one thing you got to understand about the British, the original uh, inception point of the British were actually Briffs. And a Briff is another name for a Blackamoor. And the Blackamoors, they implemented the Spanish Inquisition and they collaborated with a contract, which is a covenant with the Spanish conquistadors who are also Blackamoors, right? And these uh, British and these Dutch that came over here in 1619, that's when they established the so-called 13 colonies, right? So that's why the ship, the setting of the movie is actually in New York, right? So that's where the White Lion, which is a, uh, the White Lion, is an operating a Dutch letter of Mary the first Africans to the English colony of Virginia in 1619. So now this is basically showing you the reality of the so-called 400 year curse. So from 1619, when you're talking about the white lion, when you had these, uh, when you look at this emulation, these are black Amours coming to the land, right? Spanish conquistadors, black Amours, the Dutch, they are coming to the land in a form of uh, ecclesiastical law. One thing you got to understand is about the inception points. The European during that time period, they didn't have access to maritime law. They didn't have the technology to circumnavigate the sea. So that's how you know it was black Amours that was on the white lion, came to the geographical landmass of America and took us out of our sovereign capacity through ecclesiastical law and admiralty law, right? Which took you out of your land, right? through a, a form of many different, you know, uh, the 1724 Black Christian codes and things of that nature. They created, you know, corporate internal codes, corporate structures that took you out of your own landmass, right? So with that being said, from 1619 all the way to 2019, right, that was basically the end of the 20-year, I mean, the 400-year curse. Then in 2020, that's when Donald Trump, right, so like I said, this is a show. I'm a, we're going to get back to the Donald Trump stuff. But right now you're looking at the Blackamoors coming over here and taking the indigenous Native American blacks, so-called blacks, the so-called Indians. They took them out of their sovereign capacity because we was already here, right? So it tells you when the white line brought Sully to America, they came over here on that ship, right? And established... You know what I'm saying? Your 13 colonies. Because like I said, one of the 13 colonies is actually in New York. The setting of the movie is in New York. That's where the ship landed at in the movie. So like I said, this is all equated to Donald Trump, right? So like I said, from 1619, when they came over here on the White Lion and established slavery, from 1619 to 2019, that is the end of the verification period of the 400-year curse, Right? That's why in 2020 of July the 4th, Donald Trump signed the Declaration of Independence, which is basically the personification of the restoration of a republic. Because you know that the Aquarian energy of the Golden Age has to be facilitated by a republic, which is a matriarch. So with that being said, that basically dismantles the corporation in itself. So that's why the Balfour Declaration on October 31st, it expired. This is why... Uh, the Vatican filed Chapter 11, uh, the United States Corporation filed Chapter 11, the Federal Reserve System filed Chapter 11. All these corporations and enterprises that's connected to the energy extraction matrix basically dematerialized. So there is no corporation for the deep state shadow government talking about the cabal because he was talking about the cabal in a movie who control the world. So that's why you have a reverse of frequency. You have a reverse of frequency because you end the sun cycle. The sun cycle has to be galvanized by a matriarch, and the matriarch is a republic. So that's why Donald Trump signed the second declaration of independence on July uh, 4th, 2020, a year uh, after the 400-year curse of 1619 to 2019, right? So like I said, that is full disclosure about what's taking place on the planet. So that's why you have 
the seven year tribulation period from 2023 to 2030. 2023 was actually the beginning points of it because that's why all the corporations found chapter 11. So this is why, you know, um, America or the United States corporation itself is $33 trillion in debt to the international banking system. And the only thing that's connected to the international banking system, as far as a corporate debt is the corporate war entities under the 14th amendment, which is basically acclimated to uh, the economic system of wall street, because we all have a QCIP number, which is community uniform security identification procedure. So that QCIP number, meaning that we're a number to the system because now we're basically uh chattel property, right? So we're basically collateral for the money and the debt that they got to pay back, which is the $33 trillion in debt to the international banking system. So since they can't pay that money back, that's why they got to create a form of depopulation because it's the end of their corporation. So that so in order to depopulate the planet, that's how they suspend the debt. So the debt in itself is going to be suspended. Like I said, it's going to be from the knocking out of a power grid, from an EMP attack, or it's going to be happening from a coronal mass ejections. That's what's going to happen, right? They got to suspend the debt. That's why it was projected in the uh, the Deagle publication, talking about it's going to be, you know, a lot of people going to be dying off the planet, right? So that's why, like I said, in order to suspend the debt, you got to have a lot of people dying off. So like I said, now we're in the sun cycle. You had a restoration of the Republic because like I said, it goes all the way back to the number 19. Uh, Donald Trump, He's still the president under the continuity of government because he still has qualified immunity, meaning that he's basically still the president of uh, of the of the republic. He's the 19th president of the republic, right? So he's the last president because there is no corporation. The, the best way to understand that there's no corporation, they had uh, uh, when you're talking about Joe Biden's inauguration and things in that nature. When nobody the sit the Navy SEALs, they didn't have no emblems. No, uh, no medals on their garments. They didn't have uh, when you talking about the uh, the seven fifty seven uh flight jet of the president or whatever. The seal is off there. The seal is off Buckingham Palace. Uh, the White House is uh basically closed now. All these Capitol buildings, all these governmental buildings, is shut down, right? So that's how you know it's the end of the corporation. All these, you know, their companies and enterprises they found in Chapter Eleven, right? Uh, the state of Israel uh, expired, right? With the Balfour Declaration. All these things is happening in real time. You just got to pay attention. So that's why the beginning points of it was when he signed the second declaration. So a lot of people, you know, paint the perception that Donald Trump is a racist, but he's really giving us back the land. He's telling us who we are. But like I said, he's still connected to the establishment because he's still in office. So you got to be very, uh, meticulous when it comes to people like that, even though he is propagating a republic. Because all matriarchal civilizations, when you're talking about indigenous people, we all operated from a place of a republic. So trusting our cause is having prayed for the fortitude and a, a brave spiritual wickedness in high places. We citizens of America make this announcement to shareholders of the corporation. A shareholder is a slaveholder, right? We are basically slaves to the United States Corporation under the 14th Amendment because the 14th Amendment is a fraudulent contract when you go to the federal laws and civil procedures. So it tells you it includes the city of London, uh, the British monarchy system, and the Vatican, right? There's nobody in Buckingham Palace. There's nobody inside. Uh, there's nobody controlling uh, the Federal Reserve System because I told you that $33 trillion in debt in order to suspend the debt you have to depopulate the planet because we are basically humanoid real estate. We are the money. <laughs> so like I said, the operatives in the Atlanta government society, the second declaration of independence by the 50 states of America, right? So that's how it basically works in conjunction with all this. So the new Republic by Donald Trump, this is the second declaration of independence distinguishes the United States of America from the sub, uh, the subverse of the United States corporation. One thing about when you understand that little word right here called of, of denotes ownership of a certain people that connects you to the 14th amendment. So it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be saying the United States 
for America, not of America, because for America is for the people and for the people is for a republic. So when you see the United States of America, it's still connected to a corporation. And it asserts that the United States corporation was formed illegally and the foreign owned and shareholders, slaveholders have been quietly at war with America for 150 years. Treasonous operatives embedded within the government and the fake news networks was the deep state shadow government, the cabal, as the guy he was telling you about, it was a shadow government who knew about the grid system going down in the movie, right? Divided the people, facilitated conflict among nations to hide the U.S. corporation illegally. That is a foreign owned. So he's basically talking about democracy. Anything under democracy is basically a foreign entity. That's the shadow government, right? So that's how it's basically connected to this to the whole movie, right? It's connected to esoteric history that they hide from us, right? So for those coming in who's late to the show, like I said, when you look at the celestial body of the sun, it is basically depiction in an amalgamation of many different sunspot activities that produces uh, X-class solar flares. And that sunspot that you see on a celestial body of the sun is an emulation of the number six in ancient Hebrew. And six is a personification of the sixth ether of the spirit of the moon, which is the sleep spell of King Gu under the lunar cycle, under the Piscean age and under the age of Taurus. So that was the 6,000 year curse. So the sun is basically extracting an energy in the atmosphere that etheric force that reverses the polarity of the six ether, right? So you seeing uh, the dualistic forces of non-ether battling with six ether. That's what you're looking at when you're looking at this celestial body, right? So like I said, all throughout ancient history, uh, when you study uh, quantitative scientific analytical data, uh, sunspot activity has the ability to alter human history. It can manipulate everything on planet Earth, right? Because like I said, you got green ethereal energy coming down to the planet to reverse the polarity, the negative polarity that was propagated by the Canaanite who was doing the bidding of Black nobility, black nobility Draconian Archons. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, you know, this video is very important uh, for those coming in. Uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, get this video out there, share this video two or three times. Like I said, you got to get the information out because they put it right in your face now. They're showing you through the movies because they have to follow and adhere to a occultic law. And the occultic law is the threefold law. So they got to give it to you in a form of entertainment to basically get consent from you, from your subconscious mind, right? So they're showing you through the movies. They're showing you through the news. You know what I'm saying? This is basically the last warning. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to be taking place because I told you 2023 was setting the tone and the frequency for the seven year tribulation, 2023 to 2030. That's seven years. Right. And I told you the seven is also the symbology of the God frequency. Right. To activate the Christ consciousness. You activate the Christ consciousness from the green Ethereum energy from the Sufi order of the sons of green light, the spirit of Melchizedek. Right. Where you activate the Christ consciousness. Because you're talking about Krishna. Krishna comes from the root word Christ, Christos, right? And Christos and Krishna is basically the outer manifestation of Shiva. Shiva is equated to seven, right? Seven, when you're talking about the letter G, is a seven letter of the alphabet. G is equated to God. So when you're operating from the God frequency, that's how you activate the spirit of Melchizedek. So that green ether ethereum energy that's coming to the planet, that is basically producing an amalgamation of neutrinos that sparks the soul of man, which is Solomon's temple, right? The son of man. So the unity conscious, the unity consciousness aspect of it is basically the dualistic forces of the divine feminine and the divine masculine, basically dematerializing the energy extraction matrix with unity consciousness. So there's not going to be a messianic figure. Everybody, when you're talking about the 144,000, right? One plus four plus four equals nine. The nine ether energy, the etheric force that connects you to the planet, right? That nine ether energy 
is basically going to activate the 144,000 chosen ones to reverse the polarity of the six ether energy that was created by the archons and the Canaanite. You go to Revelation chapter 17, 17 uh, of El's Holy and Jill, it tells you that the evil reptilian gave power to the beast and the beast system has ended, right? And I showed you that in real time, right? The corporation has ended. Uh, that's why all these uh, businesses, these corporations, they found in chapter 11, it's the end of the corporation, right? So now when you back an animal into a corner, you know, they got to create psychological operations to hide the fact that the planet is going through a magnetic pole shift in the, in the midst of a sun cycle. So this is why you got to get your, your uh, neurological faculties in order, right? You got to, you know, get your endocrine system in order. You know what I'm saying? You got to get, you got to get on point, right? Because the best way to be balanced within the pole shift, you got to understand that the mind is also the embodiment of the frequency of the soul. So like I said, when you study cardio electromagnetic communication, right? The heart chakra sends messages and transmitters to the neurotransmitters to transmute information to the brain to where you operate in a state of balancement. You can't get to the higher dimensions if you're not balanced, right? That's when you operate from the path of La Loop. That's the when you connect on the path of the middle way. That's how you operate the spirit of Melchizedek, right? So that's how you operate on the God frequency, the Christ consciousness, right? And it's all happening uh, due to the energy of the sun that's coming, that's producing these coronal mass ejections and activating X-class solar flares that activates the X gene, which turns you into an X-man. Because when you activate the spirit of Melchizedek, that is your higher self. That is the Zohar body. So when you activate that Zohar body, that's when you tap into your higher abilities, right? That's what makes you chosen. You know what I'm saying? That is the diametrical difference from between you and NPCs and the 85 percenters. The 85 percenters who are the ones who are acclimated to the Metatronic overlay, which is the lunar light lock. They're going to be in a state of subjugation by operating on the frequency of the root chakra. And you're going to be in a state of evolution by operating in a place of the green ethereal energy that puts you in a state of ascension as a planet is ascending into the fifth dimension. So those are, you know, uh, that is basically the, the delineation between the chosen ones and between the ones who have a veneration and a credence to the lunar cycle, right? Because the lunar cycle is basically the embodiment of patriarchy. The sun is matriarchy. Patriarchy is connected to economics, religion, uh, anything in the material plane. So the sun has a has the ability to dismantle everything on the material plane. For those who have a credence to the material plane, you're gonna fall when the system falls. So get your shit together. That's what this video is all about. We in the midst of a magnetic pole shift in solar cycle 25. I told you, when you see solar cycle 25, two plus five equals seven, solar cycle 25 is actually the seventh seal. So ladies and gentlemen, Thanks for watching this video. End of transmission. 10, 14. We will put an end to this madness. Me again, God, I know it's been a long time since I last called you back on your line. So I hope and I pray for your hand to help me on the ladder to the land. Karma's gonna get to you and then You'll have a chariot with only one less friend Now I had distant folks that are looking to my eyes To understand the wisdom he's given And his wealth from the skies So thanks for this meal that I'm about to receive And thank you for my health and all the good memories Thanks for the courage taking on another day When I used to not believe but now I know about grace Stay away from the fire cause the flames does burn Go with your gut feeling When it's wrong you learn For every one step I take the Lord takes two And um, do unto others if you want it done unto you huh. It's me again God I know it's been a long time Since I last called you back on your line So I hope and I pray for your hand to help me on the ladder to the land it's me again god i know it's been a long time since i last called you back on your line so i hope and i pray for your hand to help me on the ladder to the land.
this a completion The selfish proto-Grecian, Amerindian, Phoenician I'm the last of the Mohicans, the bastard of the land The pen, melon, and accretion And we just trying to get back to the fact that we was kings and queens of a land Before the avalanche seized it I live on Turtle Island with the rest of the diseased it. Better than the medicine for seven different treatments Niggas try to ride away but end up getting seasick The sleep can fill my words like Braille and they're awakened with the penmanship of Hindu script Written in them vacant monastery honorary payments to the prototype Tomorrow's only a day away but nothing happens overnight The fuck's wrong with going left when you know it's right Biting off more than I can chew, that's an overbite Black on black crime is like watching two soldiers fight When all along they was on the same page, history It's me again, God, I know it's been a long time Since I last called you back on your line So I hope and I pray for your hand To help me on the ladder to the land It's me again, God, I know it's been a long time Since I last called you back on your line So I hope and I pray for your hand To help me on the ladder to the land